Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. It is now more than ever indispensable for you to take matters of your Christian life in your own hands. Many of us in our Christian life have been in the place of comfort. Literally those who had Bibles or those who have Bibles have Bibles just as tags to show the world that I'm going to church. It was something to carry to church and bring back home. Many never by themselves opened the Bible. To pray for many children of God to date has been literally reduced to saying grace. Satan doesn't want you to read your Bible. He wants your Christian life to grow weaker and weaker by the day. Receive the word with all readiness and search the scriptures. If you keep on opening the Bible, the Bible will open itself to you. This is a presentation of Alleluia Ministries International. The Lord had placed a thought that I would love to share with you and try to set you in this thought. As times are changing, it is now more than ever indispensable for you to take matters of your Christian life in your own hands. Many of us in our Christian life have been in the place of comfort. We've been in the place of comfort because we knew that somebody will always be there to pray for us. Somebody will lay his hand on us. Many of us will get even annoyed or upset when no one is coming to lay hands on us. I don't want to say that uh, we have been living our lives in Christ as spoiled breads. But our lives really look like those who have been spoiled. You see, many of us have been Christian for long. And we have carried our lives in uh, the convenience of everything that was presented to us. Going to church as usual. Having a constant moment in church. We love it. We go there because we know that it will be a rock and roll in Christ. We read our Bible only when the preacher will mention a scripture. Literally those who had Bibles or those who have Bibles. Have Bibles just as tags to show the world that I'm going to church. It was something to carry to church and bring back home. Many never by themselves opened the Bible. To pray for many children of God to date has been literally reduced to saying grace. Saying grace before they have a meal. They close their eyes and say, Lord, we thank you for this meal. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. And that is as far as the Christian life, the lives of prayer has been. Many, the giving was literally motivated by the person who was sitting next to them. When the basket, the offering basket is passing, it was just embarrassing not to have anything to give to God. And they gave because they did not want to be left out. But in this time, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we do not have that privilege anymore. We do not have all those motivating factors anymore. God wants you to take your Christian lives in your hand. For it is the scheme of the enemy to derail you. Satan doesn't want you to continue with God. Satan doesn't want you to read your Bible. He wants your Christian life to grow weaker and weaker by the day. To a point where you will not worship him anymore. To a point where you will not serve God anymore. Your serving God was a pre-COVID-19. Since you could not go to church anymore, have you still been serving God? And if you believe yes, how? You are a servant of God, not because of just a 
setup or some structure. You got to grow beyond the structure. You got to grow beyond the setup. You are a servant of God. You should serve God in good days or bad days, out there or inside here. You are saved to serve. Serving should be part and parcel of who you are in God and heaven expect it of you. The devil doesn't want you to serve God anymore. He wants you to become a puppet Christian, an empty Christian with no substance. He wants you to become a flower, artificial flower that does not grow, though it doesn't change color. God wants you to be consciously committed to the cause, the cause of your love toward him, the cause of your relationship. You must have a relationship. Being a Christian is not being part of a certain ideology, joining a certain philosophy, or just part of a dogma. Being a child of God, a Christian, here speaks of having a relationship with Christ. We have received him once in our lives. Many of you have done this, and I believe that the great majority of you have done this. It is called in our world, our kingdom, the sinner's prayer. When you stop and say, Lord, I hear you. Today I take a decision to open my heart, come inside, be my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of the Lamb of God, forgive my sins, and make me a child of God. Many of you pray this prayer. And for the few of you who are watching me and have never prayed a prayer, may you have the opportunity today to pray that simple prayer. Satan does not want you to link to God. He wants you to be like a flower, an artificial one. Good literally to an insignificant role, beauty in the house. No life in it. You are more than that. Take a decision, the Lord is saying. Commit to me beyond the branding of the logo of your church or the denomination of your belonging. You are my child. You are not just a faithful one to this group or that group. Read your word. Read the Bible. Christian of Berea, Receive the word with all readiness and they search the scriptures. If you keep on opening the Bible, the Bible will open itself to you. If you meditate the word day in and day out, you will understand it. And the grace of God will lead you correctly. Every one of you, the Lord is saying, beyond the preaching of the preacher, the teaching of the teacher. God wants you to develop a relationship with the word of God. But he does not want you only to develop a relationship in reading the word. But he want to hear your voice also every day. You must have a personal life of prayer. Beyond time to say grace before eating. Now around the table, dinner time, when you say, let's say grace, some people say so, out of culture, it's no longer out of relationship where you really mean, Lord, I thank you for this meal and I take it with thanksgiving. No, for many it is just a culture. We do so. We say a few words to God. God wants you to have a prayer life. Your prayer life should grow beyond you just saying a few words before eating or even calling on the blood before you sleep for literally less than a minute. Microwave prayers. Flash. Lord, I'm about to sleep. I pray, cast out the devil. Let me have a peaceful sleep. In Jesus' name, amen. There you start snoring. 
God say, I am here, I am your protector, I love you, for you have sent my only begotten son to come and die on the cross of Calvary. I am with you, I am your deliverer, I am your healer, I am your protector, but I long for a relationship with you. I need you to make time for me. Those of you who have been in courtship, you know how in love and intimacy, you long to spend time with uh, one another. If you love somebody, you want to have time with him. And oftentimes, you want such time to be so exclusive. It is not shared. You don't want anybody there. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I am speaking on behalf of Jehovah, the creator, the king of glory. He wants you to be with him. It is good and there is time for you and I to pray together. For the Bible says that as we pray together in agreement, God hears us if we pray in his name. But please understand that beyond you praying with your brothers and sisters, you must have your post no set aside time. Not all of us may pray for one, two, three hours. But even if it will be an organized 15 minute start there, take 15 minutes and go to the altar, your altar at home, kneel down before God, speak to God, commune with God, dialogue with God. Not because there is a prayer meeting, Announced by the church, no, it is because you love him. I love you, God, I love you. Take time, 15 minutes, I promise you, will become 20 minutes. 20 minutes will become half an hour. Half an hour will take you to one hour. Before you know it, you will be so deep in prayer that it will be difficult to stop when you start. No one was born a prayer warrior. I am here urging you to have a relationship with God. You need it today more than ever. So many flying spirits are all over the world. You need to be anchored in God. And that this will be so as you have and develop a relationship with God. Through his word, through time of prayer, and through obedience. Obey God. Obey God. When you hear his command, when you hear his voice, trust him enough to do what he says he will do. I know by experience, God may ask you things that will shake your being. It will be a test of your life. But please understand that no one, no one is unsafe in the hand of God. He cares for you. No matter what he asks you to do, do it. If you will do it, you will come out with a testimony glorifying God for what he had set for you to do. Be an obedient child of God. Obedience links you to the miracle of God. Obedience allows you to step into the blessings of God. A child of God who is obedient to the voice of God will enjoy the many blessings of God all the days of his life. Obey the voice of God. Satan in this time knows that if you cannot develop your own personal relationship with the word, he may deceive you using the same Bible. Because even the devil knows how to say it is written. Satan in this time knows that if you do not have a relationship with God in prayer, your life will be an easy prey to him. If you are not praying, you are playing. Satan in this time knows that if you do not develop a relationship with God through a life of commitment and obedience, he will enter into your life and slap you with all kinds of difficulties, tribulations, and pains left, right, and center. You will be a child of God, but you may die before your time. You may never enjoy the victory of God because of disobedience. The choice of life is yours. God say, see a place before you, life and death. You choose. Choose life that you may live.
but life and death are placed before you. Be an obedient child of God. When you pray, say, Lord, give me a heart that obeys you. Sometimes God's commandments are beyond your strength. Sometimes it seems like God is asking you too much. Many times the commandment of God, the instruction of God, what you are expected to obey in the word of God is literally a test from heaven. Every time God wants to bless you, he will allow you a privilege to show what you have inside you. It's called a test. God does not trust what he did not test. Unless you pass the test, you cannot earn his trust. For God to trust you with a financial breakthrough of one million dollars, he will want you to pass the test of obedience of $100,000. If you cannot be found faithful with $100,000, will you be found faithful with $1 million? Be a child of God who obey God. Satan does not want you to link to God, to have a relationship with God where you serve him. He wants you to just be, he want to pose your life. You used to serve God, you used to be in the choir, you used to be in the ushering department, you used to be part of protocol or security, you used to be part of the intercession or outreach in your church, you used to be part of many other departments. Now, Satan literally posed your life, your serving life. Refuse it. Serve God using the platform out there instead of uh, misusing the opportunity you have in social media. Share the word of God. Don't be part of those who are in the mud of gossip. They want to grow in the knowledge of everybody, but yet they do not know God. Instead of uh, trying to grow in the knowledge of who is who in the jungle, Choose to grow in the knowledge of God. I choose to grow in the knowledge of God. I don't care. I don't want to pay attention to who is who and who's saying what. Paul said, when I came to you, I did not want to know anything except Christ and Christ crucified. Serve God. Serve God with your worship. Serve God by reaching out to somebody. Serve God when you watch us now. Share the video. Send a message. Send the link. Encourage somebody. Find a way. And if you think that uh, you are too confined, you are in confinement, and there is literally nothing more you can do, say, Spirit of God is in a relationship with you. Say, Spirit of God, open doors. Enlighten my path. Let me know what I ought to do for you. He will show you that. He will show you how to serve. Satan does not want you to give to God in this moment. Satan gives you all kinds of excuses. He says to you, it is no time to give. It is no time to build a house of God. Remember, you need what you have. No, what you need is God. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people with a lot in their hands, but their lives are wasted. There is nothing right now that is more valuable to you than your God. What you need is not your money, is your God. What you need is not even the oxygen you breathe, it is your God. For if you have God, you will have oxygen to breathe. If you have God, you will have life free of charge. If you have God, you will have gold and silver because gold and silver belongs to him. Do not fall in the trap of the enemy that tells you giving to God is stealing from you. Don't stop giving. Give all the time. Serve God with the substance you have. Make it your call. If there is time to give, it is now. If you gave yesterday, you gave this morning, you gave in the afternoon, keep on giving. 
As you give, you receive. Be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching. In Matthew 24, Jesus Christ took them through a list of uh, what we should all look out for. He said, when you see this and this and this and this and that happening, please know that uh, the end is near. He spoke about things in the atmosphere. He spoke about things, uh, signs in the sky. He spoke about wars. He spoke about rumors of wars. He spoke about uh, politics and conflict and confrontation of all kinds between nations and kingdoms. He carried on and spoke about what will happen even in the religious space false prophet, false cross coming in the world. He spoke about things that are many of us today are witnesses of. Lawlessness will abound just as we see today a broken world we live in. Good is called bad and bad is called good. What's supposed to be Right is wrong today, and what's supposed to be wrong is what we call right today. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Afloq Howe on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Afloq Howe on all social media platforms at Afloq Howe.